What's up everybody? Big Herc 916 getting down with fresh out. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share the channel, and go to freshoutseries.com and pick you up a bar of soap and wash your ass. Cause ain't nothing worse than a funky ass. Man, you guys have been asking, so we came through. We have more females on the channel now giving you game on how they got into a life of crime. And I'm here with Megan, and she's about to drop some game on you guys. Megan, thanks for reaching out. Thanks for coming on the show. Um, could you share with our audience a little bit about your background and how you got caught up in the system? Man, that's a loaded question. Um, I was like on my own since I was like 13, you know? So um, I got into drugs, super hard drugs. I was running amok as a kid. I was in and out of juvie. I, I guess, carried that into adulthood. I started, you know, using IV drugs. I was homeless, like, years. Where, did you have both parents in the household? No, so I had never met my dad. I had my mom and my stepdad, but, you know, we just didn't get along, so. So, yeah, it, one thing, you know, turned into another, and I was, pretty much doing anything I could that was illegal. So like going to juvenile hall, um, I, cause I've been to juvenile hall. Did that do anything to uh, deter, deter you or was it more or less like amplifying just that street life? You know, it was a super deterrent cause straight up juvie's harder than jail. Like juvie here was a kick in the ass for real. Like it was hard, but I didn't know any better, so I just kept returning, kept running. Did you have anybody giving you any advice, like when you, you know, when you would get out of juvenile hall and be like, "Look, you got to turn your life around," or did you have any positive role models in your life, like a family member or anybody who tried to give you any sound advice? No, nope, never. And at that age, you know, in your early teens, when you're caught up in the street lifestyle, I mean, who were the people that were mostly influenced you? Were there other, like, teenagers who you had linked up with just along your path, or how did you, how'd you get mixed up with these people? I mean, meeting them on the street, they were all older. Some could buy liquor, some uh, were, like, 18 and up. Yeah. Uh, and it was, it was anybody I ran into, like, if I wanted to get high with somebody or hang out with somebody or go do something. I just did it. So what about school? Were, were there any teachers or anybody that you could talk to or, you know, high school? Did you actually go to class or did you graduate or? No, I, I dropped out. I, I did my freshman year for three weeks and I dropped out. Wow. Yeah. And what was it like for a young person like that? living on the streets, knowing that like, you know, most of your friends are in school and they're going to basketball games, football games and prom and stuff. I mean, I guess I never thought about it. Not until I was older. I didn't care. And I was, I was, you know, focusing on <clears throat> taking care of myself in the streets, not thinking about that. And like during the time you were on the streets, like what kind of drugs were active at that time? Because I know when I was when I was like on my little war path, it was like crack cocaine was a big thing. What was like the drug when you were out there? Crack was crack was out there, but a lot of coke was out there. It just I guess depended on what you could afford, but I did both. <laughs> wow. And um, was there someone who kind of got you, you know, involved in your your first crime as far as like that? said hey you know you can make some money selling drugs or stealing or something what was what was the, the, the initial thing that kind of got you you know committing crimes outside of just doing drugs mm. it was a mix between selling drugs and graffiti actually okay yeah. so you were like tagging buildings mm -hmm. and stuff like that <laughs> yeah. how'd you get into graffiti man um a lot of my friends did that and i was into art so it was just a thing to do, graffiti crews, party crews, trouble, whatever. Did you did you have a boyfriend? Yeah. 
Was he a bad influence too, or? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure they all were then. They yeah. were pretty bad. So what was like a turning point during that time that like, you know, things kind of went more, more left and right? Um, meeting my daughter's dad, he had a pretty bad opiate addiction. And mm. I didn't know about that. I had never seen it. Um, but it wasn't long before I was doing black and then moved from smoking it to slamming it. And things took a turn for the worse for real after that. In, in your in retrospect, in your in your perspective, as, as far as looking at all the drugs, do you, do you think that like that was like the worst that took you down the darkest path? Yes. That and meth. Yeah. 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 I. Yeah, I've seen the meth game too. I mean, I've been around a lot. I've seen like a lot of a lot of. Uh, you know, I remember the strawberry meth and all these different meths and that was popping really hard. And, mm -hmm. and like you see people and it, it's like it accelerates the rate at which your body just deteriorates faster than I didn't crack. So bad. Yeah. I mean, it's literally it ages you hella quick. I mean, it's, it's horrible. What um, what was the incident that that led you actually getting locked up for, you know, the, the drugs and stuff? Um. To be honest with you, it was just dumb shit. I would shoplift. I would do all kinds of stuff, you know. It wasn't until pretty far into my addiction that I started, like, major robbing and stealing. And So in between the time where you, you, dropped out of, you dropped out of high school and were kind of running the streets and in and out of juvenile hall, were you just, like, in group homes and stuff and then you just leave? or I did go to group homes. No, I finished um, when I went home. It didn't work out between me and my parents, so it would always end up I'd run away, they'd kick me out, whatever, you know? Yeah. And then so your your the boyfriend who was into the opioids, he he was like doing the same thing, robbing to kind of support his habit or started like really doing like really deep stuff. No, actually. He was uh it started he would hold telemarketing jobs, but after that he he didn't do shit, you know, so it was on me. Mm. It was on me to make money and take care of things because he was weak. What was, it, what was the, um, the last straw, the thing that actually got you locked up to where you had to sit down for a while that was like your, what would you call, consider your wake-up call, the crime that was like you couldn't just revolving door situation? Um, well, the revolving door kind of stopped with my last sentence. They were like, you know, I had gotten arrested for Aggravated taking the identity of another, third degree burglary, credit card theft, narcotics, paraphernalia, and um, they sat me down. And I guess after a long time of being sober, I just kind of woke up, you know? I, didn't, I don't want to go back to prison again. How much time did they give you for that? Seven. Seven years? Mm -hmm. was, um, was it you know, scary as far as realizing that you would have to do this time now and be in there for a while, or did you kind of be like you know it ain't no big thing or so before I got to prison I was like you know I guess I had my one freak out and then I was like it's whatever but the first day I hit the yard I went to medium and uh girlfriends they were like boxing cutting each other up with razor blades day one throwing hands behind the cell door and I'm like you know I really did it this time <laughs> shit's for real now so Without the first time you had like really seen it at that serious level when mm -hmm. you, yeah. Yeah. A lot different than the county. Oh yeah. It was serious. Um, people making shanks and like, you, you think it's fake, you know, when you, when you watch shows on it or whatever, but it's not. And people get dirty. Do you think that the, uh, the women's prison is, um, a lot more serious than what people think? Because, you know, a lot of these girls out here now, you know, I see them and they're doing, stuff that guys were doing back in the 80s, like just acting stupid carjackings, you know, robbing and doing stuff. And they, they're they thinking it's cool to be like gangster chicks. Do you think that they really don't have any idea what they're getting themselves into? Um, it depends, I guess, on the time. Because if you're going to minimum, like, it's not that serious, you know? But if you have to start on medium or max, like, where you're, you're sitting down with lifers, and they don't have anything to lose, you know, they don't care. So you got to learn respect and you got to learn it real quick or 
And the first place you went to, was that a, a medium or? Medium, yeah. And were there people mixed in there that were actually doing life? Mm -hmm. Were there any, anybody in particular that when you got there and you realized the caliber of people you were around of like, oh, this shit is for real? Like somebody who had a gang of towers, somebody who had a crime that you heard about that was like, you couldn't believe it. Something that kind of like just shocked you into like, you know, this is, this is my new reality. I mean, I guess in terms of like popular women. Yeah. It would be Jodi Arias. I had seen her a couple of times, but, but there was many more women on medium units that aren't ever going to walk out of prison that like have put their babies into pillowcases and beat them up against walls and like all kinds of crazy stuff like like crazy crazy people people who starved kids people like and and the sick thing is right is like you're on a medium unit and you can't show your pictures of your kids to people because you don't know and you don't think like this lady seems nice you would never know that she's a pedophile like for real shit and man that was that was a wake-up call for sure there's some crazy people in there. A lot more crazy than Jody. Now, how, how, how do they, uh, the other women look at women they find out are involved in like the pedophile stuff? Because I know in men's prison, man, that shit is like, you basically, you're, you're getting, you're getting, you're getting, um, you're getting booked off the yard. Mm -hmm. So, like it's embarrassing on behalf of females. You know, I've, like lifers have done some things about that don't deal with it but it's not like men's prison there's not like a code like you don't have to hardcore watch your back people just I mean they fuck with you they they like ridicule you or they might jump you or whatever but it's not serious like a men's unit like it should be you know so they some of them people are actually just walking the yard just like mm -hmm. walking the yard serving your food in the kitchen yeah 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 oh man um did it take a long time after being incarcerated for you to kind of figure out that this wasn't the life of you? I know for me, as soon as I got the handcuffs on, I was like, man, this is it. I'm, I'm done. I got to do something different. But I know for some people, it takes them a while, you know, to be locked up to really feel that, you know, I got to make some life changing decisions. How long did it take for you or was there a moment that really snapped you into like your your, your rehabilitation phase? You know, like I can't really pinpoint when it was, I guess it was a couple years in when I stopped being angry about being locked up and I started to realize what got me there. My friends were dying. They were all overdosing. Um, I guess I just had enough time to sit down and think. And I'm like, I think about, and I got here, I'm 24 years old. I'm not leaving till I'm 30. If I get a program. Like, that's crazy. And I've spent so much of my life and I've wasted so much of my life doing crime, going in and out of jail, and I have nothing to show for it. And it's not, it's not what I want. Yeah, that's deep. I mean, um, I know for a lot of people, it, it really takes, even, you know, being locked up, a lot of people are like, oh, man, you know, I heard people say, you know, you still got one more in you. I'm like, dude, I don't have any more in me. I'm, I'm like, I'm cool because, you know, if... I'm gonna be 30, you know, 30 something when I get out and people are like, man, you're still young, you can get out there and, you know, get back in the game. I'm like, for what? You know, so I, I, I think it's um, definitely a, a choice you gotta make on a personal level and the people you hang around with in there have a big influence on that. Mm -hmm. They do. And everybody's sitting outside and they're smoking and they're talking about how, how um, gangster they were, all the shit they did and it's like, when you get over that hump and you're not like that anymore, you look at them and you, it's almost sad. Like you pity them, you know, yeah. cause they're just going to keep coming back. Yeah. I mean, my neighbor was like 72. Damn. 72. Damn. Yes. Like sad about to turn 73 before I left. I'm wondering if she's going to die in there, you know, husband died while she was in there. Like, and you just got to be tired of that shit, man. You gotta... Was she in and out? Um, not that I know of, but she had like a career, man, embezzling and, isn't that crazy when you see somebody like that that could be like your great grandparent or somebody you're like, yeah, man, this is somebody reality. They're mm -hmm. in here in their seventies. Yes, in here in their seventies during COVID, crazy, crazy. Wow. It was. Lots of people. I mean, I, I've seen people get released and come back like three, four times before I ever left once. You know, so that was. And you know what? You know what? When when you see those people and 
they come back and they're like, yeah. And then people, they're, people are listening to them telling the story. I'm like, dude, you, why you want to listen to them? They were, they had freedom and they came back. Mm-hmm. It's like, you're a dumbass. Why are you in here bragging like, oh yeah, I went out and I did this and that, but you came back. With more charges. Like, I know it's crazy. And I kept thinking every time I would see that, like, man, if somebody gave me one chance, like that would be all it would take. I'm not, I'm not coming back here. You know? Yeah. I, I was the same way when I seen, you know, somebody like, you know, oh, the halfway house, man, I was in there. They were tripping, man. I just only smoked weed once and I came. I'm like, dude, what do you, you just did 15. What are you thinking? It's like, you, you don't like it out there. Now you're coming back and you act like you're all cool and you're coming in the same child line with me. You could have been eating burgers and steaks. Mm-hmm. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Hey, there you have it. Big Hurt 916 getting down with Megan on Fresh Out. You tired of smelling like stinky butt, funky armpits? Wash your ass. Go to freshoutseries.com and pick you up a bar of soap.